This is the Jefferson's Lines Terminal in Missoula, Montana. Used to be the Greyhound uh, Terminal. It also is cross-ticketed, so I bought a Flixbus uh, ticket to ride the Jefferson Lines bus. And uh, the station's closed right now. I looked at the hours. It basically is open only around when uh, buses are coming or going. And so since it's closed and I have a couple hours because I want to get here early, I'm going to walk down Broadway and see some other things, which uh, will be in a different video. So I'm back at the uh, bus terminal. Terminal might be a strong word. And uh, this bus, I believe, is coming in from Billings and it should be on time. And like a lot of bus travel, it's hurry up and wait. Um, I'm actually here 45 minutes before it's scheduled to leave. And it might be 30 minutes before it gets here. And I kind of felt energized at first. Now I'm feeling kind of dismal, which is another part of bus travel. Um, but I'm, I'm okay, doing okay, just waiting for that bus. Okay, I lied. I took another walk around the block. Now it is three minutes till the bus shows up and 18 minutes till it departs. Um, and I did get a notice it's running on time, so let's see if that remains to be true. So the bus station has free books. I never run out of stuff to, to read in Montana. This is the inside of the bus station. So I just saw it coming in from that direction. Turned around the corner there. So any second now, unless it's going to make a fool of me, the bus is going to pull, pull in here. Ah, there we go. That's a full-size coach, and I don't know how full it is. Um, tinted windows, but I guess I'm about to find out. Hopefully it'll be easy from here, and I don't know how much footage I'll actually get when I'm on the bus, except for rest stops. It depends on if I have a window seat and stuff like that. So I'm on the bus, and uh, we're taking off. And uh, I'm the only person on the bus, which is interesting. We're about to get on the freeway, and those are the uh, early to northern, I believe, uh, rail yards. And they're pretty extensive in Missoula. A lot of freight goes through here and is stored or routed here in ways that I don't really understand. It's going to look like this for a while, although in a while it'll start looking better because we'll be more in chorus, not just in the looking at the berm. Um, it's three hours bus ride, so I'm not going to capture every second of it. That exit there, that road there, leads to a pass between the mountains, and that leads up to... Uh, Flathead Lake, Kalispell, and Whitefish, which uh, we should be in next week, but can't really see much here. Now you really can't see anything. Okay, yeah, so if you look at that notch between the hills, that's the road. Okay, yeah, now you can see more. That's the road that goes up, uh, Highway 93 goes up northward. So right here we are crossing the Clark Fork River, and if I'm correct, this I-90 crosses it um, seven times before we finally leave it behind totally. Um, it turns to the north at a certain point and we continue to the west. And as you can see, the terrain has already changed. Um, we're out of farmland, out of towns, and we're not quite in just the pure nat national forest, but we are getting close. And I feel kind of melancholy, and I think this tinted window makes me feel that way even more. This is Alberton, and uh, this is actually one of the larger settlements we're going to see after leaving uh, Missoula. We're 25 miles west of Missoula, and uh, yeah, this is this is about as big as it gets um, until we cross over into Idaho. And as you can see, the mountains have gotten very close, so we're going through a pretty narrow valley here. crossing the Clark Fork. I have missed some, including some that were a bit more spectacular, more rocky canyons. Um, and there's more to come. Uh, this time I was looking at maps and uh, predicted it. Out of signal, the GPS still works. And there is one other town coming up in a couple miles. 
there's another crossing of the Clark Fork, and yeah, it's uh, pretty mellow here compared to how it can be sometimes. And we are uh, a couple miles away from Superior. grocery store not to have a, like a full supermarket and uh, actually from Missoula a hundred miles a hundred miles after you leave Missoula until you're in a city large enough to have a supermarket um, uh, this is superior and uh, sometimes when I've been on this road and I've been on this road many times before there's a elation to it and all these deep woods and big rocks and small towns uh, seem charming Today it does feel a little bit, um, I don't know, depressing, claustrophobic in its own way, um, but that's just me. Form your own opinions based on this scenery. So we're crossing the Clark Fork for the final time. This is near St. Regis, and uh, St. Regis used to be a rest stop. There's a travel center there, and from what I can tell, we are not getting off the highway here unless there's a second exit. Um, which is good because it'll make the trip go faster and uh, I will miss out on my Cool Ranch Doritos. So one thing to say about this trip is that um, I have, there I have been no stops uh, west of Missoula. Uh, it's not a local bus or it's not for this community. It's for people going from Billings to Spokane. And the fact that it is empty right now it's probably actually deadheading it's probably preparing for an eastbound run in the morning and while they're doing that they might as well take some people on and about a dozen people did get off in missoula but uh that was it and i don't think it stops in it might stop in coeur i guess we'll find out but uh pretty minimal right now we're 30 miles from the uh border the montana idaho border and it's just gonna keep on climbing up and St. Regis was the last town, so to speak. And uh, you can see what's going on out that window. There's an aspect of Zeno's paradox as I go west because each town gets half as big as the one before, but they don't seem to ever totally disappear, even when they're barely, literally and figuratively, hanging, you know, clinging to these cliff sides. That's the 50,000 silver dollar casino, and there's a gas station. Um, this is an important, just like I said, it's an important rail line. Um, it's an important uh, freight line for freight trucks, which is why you have this freeway here, not for the towns of 200 people every 15 miles. This is Salties, Montana. You can see some of those houses look like they were substantial houses. And there's a good chance that at one time this was a uh, mining or logging town that actually was much larger and had some wealth. But now that was Salties and uh, next stop is Lookout Pass. And I don't know if it's clear, but okay, this is better. There's still snow here, there's still unmelted snow, so we are really gaining an elevation, just snow in patches, but there is still snow in the shadows of the mountains. And as you can see here, those patches of snow have become larger and are almost continuous in certain places on this side of the road, the shaded side of the hill. This side of the road. There's actually, there is some in there now. So this is Lookout Pass. There's a funny and maybe apocryphal story about how it got it, that name. And uh, now we are going downhill with a quickness. We are now also in Idaho. This is the first time I've been in Idaho since 2020. And uh, after crossing that pass, we will get to 
more towns. The story about why it's called Lookout Pass is somebody drove a um, drove a wagon off of that thing right there. So look out. Um, and then yeah, we're just continuing through more mountains. So you can see on that side of the road there is a uh, bicycle path. Um, and that's actually a recreational bicycle path um, for long distance, not mountain biking, but uh, hybrid biking. Uh, goes through some beautiful scenery, and that is, I believe, on one of the right-of-ways of the old Milwaukee Road through here. Um, so a lot of people come here to bicycle along that. And we are a mile or two from Wallace, and also it says something about Golconda District. And i uh, been to Golconda in Nevada, and I guess in Idaho. So yes, Golconda can be achieved. So that is uh, Wallace, Idaho on my left. And notice it's a very narrow town. And uh, one other thing about Wallace and about this side of the road is once you cross the mountain um, and you're in Idaho, the Idaho handle is, Panhandle quickly becomes more like a place with full-size towns, at least by Idaho standards, after we spent, you know, the 30 miles crossing past St. Regis. And uh, I'll probably make some more comments about that as we go along. This is Kellogg, apparently. Um, the Idaho Panhandle is about a little bit less than 100 miles wide, 70 miles wide, something like that, and we're about halfway through it. It's another 30 miles, and we'll be going through Coeur d'Alene and then on to Spokane. And uh, kind of running out of things to say. I'm getting kind of tired at this point, I admit. So that's not the border there. It just happened to be a river here. But uh, this is uh, Washington State. I took a little nap and I woke up and I was at mile zero. And now we're at mile 299. So we're in Oregon, uh, Washington State. And uh, Spokane is still in a dozen miles. And uh, this is what I'm looking at as it gets dark. Well, we just pulled off the freeway in downtown Spokane. And uh, the bus stop is in a couple blocks. So I just got off that bus. This is the Spokane Intermodal Center. I've been here, but not for a long time. Um, and it is open 24 hours a day, which is nice. This is also the train station, and I do have, I'm gonna get on the Empire Builder for not for a while. So the Jefferson Line coach was really nice, fast service, and uh, comfortable, and they had a lot of space. Dismal, but um, that was kind of my mood. The service itself was excellent. Anyway, so uh, this is the end of the video, and uh, one reason I wanted to show this was just how big it is um, and how far it is and how small those towns are. Because sometimes I'll be talking to somebody from a different area and I'll say, my little rural village of 50,000 people that's far outside of Berlin, 75 kilometers out of Berlin, still has daily train service. And so different skills there. So I wanted to show what it's like to go from Missoula to Spokane. And now we're in Spokane, we still have some light. So I'm gonna actually take some more um, footage here, but this is the end of this video.